Cosmetics is amazing makeup that offers highly pigmented products for the basic beginner as well as the professional makeup artist. Geek Cosmetics has stunning eyeshadow palettes, lip glosses, creamy semi-matte lipsticks, and liquid matte lipsticks, and a wide array of styles of mink lashes to fit your every mood. And don't forget your blush palette and your highlighter palette, and so much more. To get your Geet Beat, visit GeetCosmetics.com. That's Geet, G-E-A-T, Cosmetics.com. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Lexi Show podcast. There's a lot going on. We got to get into it. My co-host is here. Hey. Safana, hey. she's here. Hey. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so this is the Lexi Show podcast and uh, is sponsored by Geek Cosmetics. Geekcosmetics.com. Get your greatest makeup there. And, and we are powered by NCM Studios. NCM Studios. Garrett is over here. He's our producer. Yo, say something so they know you're here. <laughs> Let's get right into this. Current news. All right. Uh, some bad news. Nicki Minaj's dad, uh, Robert Mirage, has died after being struck in a hit and run accident. Yeah. Um, the Nassau County police in New York said that he was walking on the road mm-hmm. um, and uh, Friday evening around 6 when he was hit by a vehicle. He was so young, too. Yes, 64 years old. Uh, cops say that the driver then fled the scene. Yeah. Uh, and nobody really got a meaningful description from the witnesses. So they are asking that if anybody knows about this, if anybody is aware of this, please help the cops and give them. Say something. Yeah, say something. Say, say something. something. Yeah, absolutely. My heart goes out to her. I lost my father in December. Wow. Last December. And so there's nothing like the pain of losing a dad. So yeah. prayers for her and mm-hmm. her family. Absolutely. Yeah. And so she hasn't spoken on her dad's death yet. So they, you know, there's shots of them together embracing over the years uh, and all of that. They sure. obviously had a decent relationship. Sure. Um, and uh, so they're... There we are with that. Let's move on to, uh, let's talk about those stimulus checks. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Everybody looking for them stimulus checks. <laughs> yes, are. Garrett, are you looking for it, sir? Garrett sounds real excited about the yes, stimulus Yes, sir. <laughs> he spoke up. So, so I just want to let you know, so we have a clearer idea now of, of, of that $1,400 stimulus check uh-huh. schedule. Uh-huh. Two possible timelines. So I just kind of want to, you know, help you out with that. Help the people. So what they're saying, I got to help the people. So what they're saying is, go ahead and line up your 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 hair appointment. Okay? Uh-huh. Get your wigs made. Amen. Uh, they're saying that if the stimulus check passes Congress on March 12th, mm. then you can get your check March 22nd. That's not that far away. Okay. They said, you know, the stimulus bill has to be signed into law so so if it's if it's done on the 14th you'll get it on the 23rd not bad okay and your first direct deposit ah yeah uh-huh will hit <laughs> march 22nd i'm not getting it so i'm not i'm yeah. just saying i'm just i'm talking to I the mean, people okay it can, your first deposit check, uh, direct deposit can hit March 22nd or the week of March 29th. So what they're saying is what group do you belong into B- or do you belong to? They're saying that the d- direct deposit is the way to go and you're going to get your check first. Wow. And they said that matters. Whatever wow. group you're in, wow. that's that's what matters. So I just wanted to hip y'all up to the boogie. You're helping the people. I'm trying to help the people. Moving on. <laughs> T.I. and time. Oh, Lord. I don't know what is going on there uh, apparently a lot like quite a bit is going on <sighs> the production on vh1's reality series ti and tiny friends and family hustle has been paused what after this after the show stars rapper ti and his wife tamika tiny harris were accused of sexual abuse um so production on the fourth season of it has kind of been halted and a spokesperson from MTV said, we are aware of the allegations. And while they are not connected to our show, (laughs) 
Let's make that clear. While they're not connected, those allegations are not connected to our show. Wow. We have reached out to T.I. and Tiny, as well as local state officials, and given the serious nature of the allegations, we have decided to suspend production for right now. Um, I had no idea. So what they're accused of, back in January, this girl named uh, Sabrina Peterson accused T.I. of putting a gun to her head in an Instagram post. And I saw the, did you see the Instagram post? I saw the in Instagram post. And she talked about it and she then used her account to share statements from over 30 women who claimed they had been drugged and coerced and forced into sex and trafficking by the Harrises. Wow. And the couple, of course, denied uh, those statements and, and um, a statement from their spokesperson said that Mr. and Mrs. Harris want to be on record, watch this, want to be on record and more importantly, want the public to know that they emphatically deny in the strongest way possible the egregiously appalling allegations made against them by Sabrina Peterson. The Harrises have had difficulty with this woman for over a decade, wow. and they are taking this matter very seriously, and if she doesn't stop, appropriate legal action will be taken. Wow. So it's pretty serious. Did you did you see his response? I did not. I saw his response. What was his response? So his response was okay. uh, that he was emphatic about the fact that while he and his wife reserve, he said, what I will not do okay. is I will not air out what me and my wife choose to do in private in our bedroom. You know what that means, though. Well. That means we get down. I'm saying. That means we, we swing a little but, bit. But however. Huh? How be ever. We do what we do. We do what we do and we did what we does. Huh? Yes. But what he said in addition to that was, listen, I can tell you okay. we've never forced anybody to do anything in any way. <laughs> That's what he said. Uh... <laughs> He said that. Yes. He okay. did. Now, I mean. So for, basically they admit, yeah, we, we have a third we do party things. that come in from, from time to time. We do things. More times than. That's what he said. We want to talk about. Without but we ain't forced it. nobody to do nothing. We didn't have to do that part. Okay. When we did what we did. When we did what we did. Moving on. <laughs> Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. You love them. You love Yay! that couple. Okay. It's a lot that you're doing. <laughs> um, They're about to become a family of four. I'm ecstatic. The. I am. It's a lot. I'm. I, listen. What are you? Why? I love them. Okay. I think she. I think they're a great couple. No, I think they're a great couple. I'm just not ecstatic. About I it. am ecstatic. Hey, say what you want. The Duke and the Duchess of Sussex uh, <laughs> are expecting their second child together. That the couple announced uh, their baby will be the younger sibling to the couple's son named Archie, Yay. who's also about to turn two. Yay. And they shared this news on Valentine's Day. Yay. After uh, Megan, who's 39, revealed that she had suffered a miscarriage back in July. Mm. So she said losing a child, uh, in, you know, is an unbearable grief. Absolutely. And uh, and so they talked about that. So that's that's all the more reason why I'm happy for her. Yeah. yeah you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I suffered several before I had my son. I didn't know that. I did. I was told I would never have children. Look at that. So my son is a miracle baby. Yes, he is. So for her to be able to expect a rainbow baby behind mm -hmm. suffering a loss like that mm -hmm. plus i just i think they're adorable I yes do. yes yes I yes do. okay I all right well we are moving into the facts that i don't care about all right the first fact that i don't care about is about kanye west <laughs> Again, no, no, no 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 this is it's, it's, it's getting just, a little it's getting a little weird it's getting oh a little weird Lord. check this out a handful of artworks that were created by a young kanye west were assessed on PBS's Antiques Roadshow. Have you ever seen that show? It's amazing, a great show. Amazing show. No, it's a great show. Amazing it's, show. It's where people take antiques that they found maybe in their closet or something. Garage handed sale. down Garage sales. And they take it to this Antique Roadshow. And mm -hmm. these are experts in, in categories that you would not believe. Like you bring a sword to them and they know off the top of their head. The origins. The origins. Yeah. They can go back and they can tell you how much it's worth. Absolutely. It's amazing. So these, sometimes these people come up on some money. They do. On something that's been sitting in their attic for years. Yeah. So it's a great show. Yeah. So on PBS's Antiques Roadshow, um, young Kanye West, when he was young, he had some paintings and they were assessed on that show. And now somebody named Vinoda Benznayake yep. 
who works in uh, D.C., a law firm, this big person, oh my God. (laughs) He does international legislative policy matters, and he studied at Georgetown and Wharton and the University of something law school. Yes, you have to do that. You have to take a deep hands like this. Do it. (laughs) Bought the stuff. And so they're saying that these are impressive set of works, and uh, it's a surreal pencil drawing of, you know, we're showing you some of the pictures right now. And They're actually amazing. Are they? They are to me. Artist objective. I, well. Okay. If they're amazing, they're amazing. I just, I, it's, I don't appreciate how you did that. I don't, I'm just saying. I, and so there we go. A, a, a relative <laughs> of West brought them to the PBS, brought them to PBS mm-hmm. in search of evaluation. So it's a, it's a thing. It is. It's a whole thing. And then, and, and I, this was just a fraction of what the family member owns. So yeah. this could be a thing. This could be I a mean, come cash up. cow. Cash okay. cow. Huh? So support, uh, support, you know, reportedly the artistic gene runs deep in the family. We talked about North. No? I did Okay. But Kim Kardashian is talking about it. I, I, okay. She's saying that she posted an image of the painting created by the couple's daughter, North, and the internet went wild. They claiming did. that the painting was too sophisticated to be done by a child. And then the the art happen. teacher's daughter yeah. came on to authenticate, like, no, this is what happened with me. It's the same picture. Yeah, yeah. My mother's been teaching this piece of art for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. And after all that, ask me, do I care? <laughs> Not even a little? I don't think so. Okay. Another thing that, um, you know, we can, we can move on about is, yeah, surgery. Uh-oh. Tessica Brown. Let's get into it. Got the Gorilla Glue removed. She did. I'm excited again. Can you tell? She got the, she got the Gorilla. I'm, no, I'm glad that she got the glue removed from her head. Because, sure. Because, you know, it, it, yeah. Yeah. She needed it out because. But the GoFundMe. Let's talk about the GoFundMe. The GoFundMe. I know how you feel about the GoFundMe, and I just the GoFundMe is twenty thousand dollars. But did you know? Because I mean, listen, she raised twenty thousand dollars. Let's talk more. about that. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. And, and and I'm not saying I'm for the GoFundMe or against the GoFundMe. Uh-huh. I just want to offer a different perspective. What's the perspective? Because I know how you feel. What's the perspective? L- let me let me. Preface. I can't give a dime to that. Let me, and you don't have to. But here's the thing: Did you know that she's donated over ninety five percent of it to who? To, I'm gonna tell you who because I wrote it. Down. Oh, okay. Huh? Did you write it? Okay. According to TMZ and the New York Post, mm-hmm. Tessica Brown mm-hmm. she generated over twenty thousand dollars to the tune of about twenty four k. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, what she did was she actually donated mm-hmm. to the reconstructive surgery fund of the doctor that actually did her surgery. So she didn't even keep. Nice, nice. And and, and another thing. Nice. Let me tell you what else Miss Tessica did. Okay. Huh? Tessica. Tessica started a clothing line. And she's actually, well, listen, I'm trying, ma'am, I'm trying to tell you about Tessica. I didn't say a word. You didn't have to. The floor is yours. Okay. So Tessica started a clothing line, so she doesn't even need the money. Got it. In the GoFundMe. But what she she needs. uh Uh-oh. I it's just, it's just, it's just a little, you know, we got to read. I we got to read labels. We got to know what it is. We got to kind of look at Absolutely. labels and kind of look at it and go, oh, I probably should. <laughs> ah! And I agree with that. Ah. I absolutely agree with that. But okay. I don't want people to, you know, treat her as whatever, as whatever the other part was. I don't want people out here misrepresenting this lady like she just got this money and she okay. took it. No, that's she, understandable. You know what I mean? Absolutely. She donated it to people that understand her plight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? That's good. So, that's the part that nobody's talking about. That This is what I'm saying. And I'm the advocate for the conversation that's not being had. I get it. All right. That's all I'm saying. Well, there you go. Facts I don't care about. <laughs> Still. <laughs> now it is time for the Goofy Goober Knucklehead McSpazitron Award. Who does it go to this week? Well, that's oh debatable. Boy. Oh, boy. That's debatable. So, Wendy Williams has a husband, ex-husband. Uh, what's his name? Kel- Kelvin Hunter. Is it finalized? Who knows? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, he's on Instagram. He's on IG holding hands with someone. His new boo. His new boo. And he did, he did it on Valentine's Day. And the <laughs> caption reads, 
queen and slim back at it again mm. lots of laughs celebrate your queen and elevate your king enjoy first of all let me tell you what i'm tired of <laughs> the king and queen thing over it buzzword over Why? it oh my god <laughs> it, <laughs> it is the most overused situation right now oh yeah you know i just want to talk to all the black kings out there you know and a young king coming up I'm what's so happening tickled. i'm so tickled. i don't know what's happening everybody's not a king well right maybe now. Like, maybe it's because it's so it's used so much but used so much out of context you know yeah, what i mean what like, are we doing just it's not okay just to be a person we just can't say what's up bro like what's up like you doing that thing you you're really making it nah okay. everything's hey king okay maybe it's the thing that we're trying to we're trying to uplift okay yeah, no. So, no. Garrett says celebrate no. your queen and elevate your king. But you're Kelvin Hunter, and you're known for the things that that you've done. It doesn't but, match. It but doesn't. you're a king. Well, I mean, she's a queen. Okay. I don't know. Okay. So, <laughs> and he shows a picture of him and his new boo. They got their hands are intertwined. So she can't get a pic. She she can't she can't get. <laughs> She can't get her picture up, though? But the thing is, I think yeah. those that know, know, you know? Yeah. And those that don't need to, don't, don't. Yeah, I guess that's his I take mean, on it. I listen, guess that's his, you, his take. This Live hand. your life, bro. Take this hand. Take that, take that. Because because maybe he's tired of being in the in the forefront. He's not. And because maybe he wants to. He's not because you wouldn't have posted the picture in the first place. I don't buy that. Just stay quiet. Just hush. So what are you doing it for, sir? I'm just. Just to prove I got somebody I want to tell the world. But yet I don't want to show her. I want to be out there, but not really. Not so much. I want to show the world that I'm with somebody, but no. Nope. I want to give you a little bit, but not a lot. Give a little shoulder. Take it back. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. It's like, it's like celebrities that have a baby and then they show you the foot. Right, right. What's happening? Right, right, What's right. happening show in the, the world today? Show the baby or don't show I the baby. I can't do it. So the goofy goober either goes to him for not giving it all, but giving a little. Still wanting to be in the limelight, but not so much. Give a little shoulder. Or it goes it to her for being with this goofy goober. How about... Who's the knucklehead McSpazitron? I think it's a couple's award. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I think... I think we... Since y'all queen and slime. I think we give them each a Let's statue. adjust the crowns of the king and the queen. This is what I'm saying. Let's get it. Do it. Let's get it. All right. You get the award today. All right, it is time for our relationship segment that is headed by my beautiful co-host, Safana. Safana, take it away. So excited, Lexi. What oh, you excited about? I'm excited about the great unlearn. Okay. It's this weekend. Okay. So it's a webinar, super, super dope. We're going to be walking people mm -hmm. through the five things that you must unlearn about dating if you want to do it successfully. Five things that I have to unlearn. Okay. Yes. Number one. The number one thing is positioning. Mm. What it is, how to do it, Ooh. and what you've been taught against it okay i can see that Number second two. thing is pursuit okay what it is what you've been taught and what it's not come on come on the third thing is your purpose understanding of your purpose mm -hmm. and how it impacts your romantic decision absolutely all day. Number four. Approach. Mm -hmm. It ties so many people up. What is approaching? Can women approach men? What does that look like in practicality? We're going to unlearn some of the things that have been hindering people from connecting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you're going to learn the right information in its place. And it's all going to be through a biblical lens with a very, very practical application. And the fifth thing Come on. is expectations. Ah, the realistic ones mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the unrealistic ones. Wow, that's yeah. good. Yeah, because I I expect the great. You do, but what I'm getting is unlawful DMs. <laughs> okay, those pursuits, those approaches. Can okay, you talk about that in your little webinar? We can talk about the deacons it. are sliding into my DMs, Listen, Garrett, and how and that and they a, sliding in and they, and they that's saying, an approach. They saying some crazy stuff. They are approaching. Yikes. And, okay, and how do you how do you respond to that? What are my expectations? What are your expectations? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. A, an, an invite for, for breadsticks at the Olive Garden, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so the great, know. the great Unlearn is this Sunday. Okay, okay. 2 21, 21 Okay. And the information is on the flyer. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. It is time for the segment called You Asked For It. And that is the segment that uh, I talk about when people come on my page and they say some of the craziest of things or they're in my DMs or whatever it is. And I respond, uh, this week, 
so so I put up stuff like you know praise teams and uh, now everything that I do is a repost from somebody else. Yeah. And so some you know I found this um, somebody I posted this praise team or or something and I posted it. And I never say nothing. I just always go, oh, well, you know, mm-hmm. I'm here for the, the comments. Mm-hmm. And somebody said, not very nice. Not everyone are great singers. But the church is not about embarrassing people. It's, a, it's about love mm-hmm. and encouragement, amongst other things. And posting them on social. All I did was post. But didn't you get it off social media? Like we I were, did. It was already on social I don't media? make these things up. <laughs> I don't go on YouTube and tape it, and I get it from somebody else's page, and thousands of people have already laughed themselves to scorn, and I just repost and go, oh, my. Yeah. That's all I say. You know, it's something about having a platform. Yeah. People think that, well, watch this. Nothing pisses me off more than somebody questioning your Christianity because you post something or, you know, or, or, you know, something like this and you don't even say anything, mm-hmm. but it's like, oh, you have a responsibility. You can't do it, but you're doing it, but, but you're doing it. But when I do it, it's a problem. When I post something, it's this big hubbub. Like I got somebody that's pissed right now. They yeah. are mad at me. Okay. They, they are very mad, but they came on my page mm-hmm. and gave me unsolicited advice. What you need to do, why don't you do this? And why don't you just like that? <clears throat> I get it all the time. I get it all the time. But when I respond and I go in, because you're on my page, I didn't go to your page. You know what I want to know? I don't know what, what's, what's, what's happening. This is what I want to know. Go. And, and this is for, um, because I've been in leadership for years. Yes. And, um, you know, I don't profess to be this great platformed person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, I understand influence and I understand leadership and mm-hmm, responsibility. Mm-hmm. And those are all very real things. Mm-hmm. But I guess what I don't understand is why is it that for the platformed person mm-hmm. that people are so offended by, mm-hmm. why don't we consider that the platformed person mm-hmm. It's still a person. Well, they, 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 nobody ever talks about I that. Want, I want, and I don't understand <laughs> that. I ah. don't understand. And that does not, that does not absolve no, no, no. responsibility no, it doesn't. or it leadership does or anything like that. Yeah. But I wonder mm-hmm. why we don't consider the person behind the platform. People come for me on a daily basis. And I wish I had more time. I honestly wish that I could, uh, you know, take a break in my schedule so that I could address you properly. But um, I don't have the time. And so when something comes across and somebody says something crazy, you know, oh, why did you do that? And why don't you do that? I'm like, yeah, okay, all right, da 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 And then all of a sudden, oh, my God, you've hurt me. I am so hurt. And I don't, and, and, and I but guess. But I never sit back and say, oh, my God, I'm so hurt. You have scathed me for the rest of my, my spirit is vexed. I can't sleep at night. But when I do it. Yeah. But that again, that's that's my question. Why Unbelievable. Why don't we consider the feelings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mental health of yeah, yeah, yeah. the platformed person. They, it, why they, don't it, we it doesn't do that? Exist. I think that we should. I think just as much as we have to care for mm. the people, you know, that are not platformed, I, people keyboard, are people. Keyboard cowboys do not care about the mental health of the people that they are sending the messages too. And you know what? They I, don't care about it. Not only that, but I think that one thing that we don't talk about enough yeah. is the um, self projected relationships and proximities that we have with people on social media. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like we project or we uh, perceive of these relationships and interactions with people, mm-hmm. and they're not necessarily appropriate. I don't know you, and you don't know me if we don't know each other in real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and just like I was talking about last week, if you don't know who you are, yeah. why is it that a person on social media mm-hmm. can impact how you see yourself? And I get it. Mm-hmm. If there are lots of people, mm-hmm. that, that makes a difference. Mm-hmm. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you don't know me mm-hmm. and I don't know you, yeah. what you say about me mm-hmm never has the ability to change who I know that I am. Yeah, but people are saying that it does, and they're putting way too much on it. 
So, but I mean. you do comedic commentary. And people don't get that. And you've been I, doing that for years. And I will drag you. And, and I, I will drag you. Wait, and and it's all love. It's but, all love. It's all comedy. It's all comedy. But <laughs> You've been doing this for years. For years. For years. But everybody's really, really sensitive. Everybody's like super, super sensitive. And I get oh that my too. god. I get it though. To a degree. I do. I everybody, do. everybody everybody's crazy crazy sensitive. But mental health has never been where it is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. never it been be. as fragile without yeah, as true. many resources and, and that kind of thing. And yet your thumbs are still going I, on my pains. <laughs> and yet I, And yet I tried. And I, yet <laughs> With all that we've said, and yet they still do it with all the mental health and with all of this and with all of that, you're still show show some love. Yeah. Put put some love out there. But no, you're still out there and you're still going. And as long as you're out there, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> We're moving in. Lexi's opinion. Lexi's opinion. All right, so there is this new, Garrett, there is this new thing out called Clubhouse. Everybody loves Clubhouse. Everybody loves Clubhouse. I'll be on there tonight. Yeah, everybody loves Clubhouse. It's a thing. It's a, it's, it's, it's an app where everybody can come on and have conversations and it's groups and you can kind of see the pictures of people and you can, people are doing very creative things on Clubhouse. There are good Clubhouses, like people telling you how to save money and, you know, people on there mm-hmm. helping you with businesses sure. and this, that, and the third, and sure. they're doing giveaways and da-da-da-da. Yep. My opinion about Clubhouse. Uh oh. Clubhouse can be good and it can be bad. It's neutral. It's like a car. Right. You can take a car and you can, you know, go rob a bank. Sure. I did that. Go rob a bank. You I can did, have a I getaway did. car. I did. That. With the car. The car is neutral. The car is not bad. It wasn't just, the car's fault. It was my fault. I did that. Have that. Yep. As a car. Or you could pick up your grandma and you can you can take her to a lovely dinner pick in that church. same car. It's neutral. Yeah. Clubhouse is neutral. That's what you make What I'm it. saying, I can't believe you robbed a bank, but that's I did every that. time we talk about it, <laughs> it gets better and better. <laughs> so here's the thing. So Clubhouse is a neutral thing. Mm-hmm. But I think Clubhouse, in my opinion, gives people a platform, Garrett, that they talk. And we don't know if they're if they've backed up yeah. what they're talking about. True. There are so many people. I had to turn off my notifications yeah, me to too. Clubhouse me because too. when I tell you that people are on there twenty four hours a day, yes, seven days a week, and yep. for me, in my opinion, this is the segment, Lexi's opinion. To me, it's taking away sometimes yeah. from what God has called you to do. I have a business. I have a, a cosmetic company that I just started. I can't, I can't afford. I am so busy. I can't afford to be on Clubhouse. For hours. I, and, and on every topic. And yeah. this, yeah. and, I, and I think that there are some uh, people on there that are talking. How about this, Garrett? There are some people that were on there talking that I personally knew. And the stuff that they were saying, I was like, they don't live any of it. Mm-hmm. And I, knew, I know them personally. Lying. And they're on Clubhouse acting like experts. And their life is in shambles. Like they don't, they're not practicing whatever. They're, oh my God. You know why? Because in, in this life, we live for the sound bite. Yeah. Yeah. We just want to hear something that's so good. Oh my God. Listen to that line. And the oh gems. My God. Oh, they're oh, just dropping gems. Oh, that's a gems. nugget. That they dropping gems. Oh my God. That king. Yeah. <laughs> It's dropping gems. That queen is dropping gems. But that king and queen are is sitting at home. The, their bills aren't paid. Their credit score sucks. They, they're, they're living with their mom, and they haven't accomplished anything. But yet they're telling you what you need to accomplish in your business, in your life, and, and how God is about to do this for you and that and that. And you're not living any of There's no fruit Yeah, is what I'm saying. There's the no thing. fruit. That's the danger of Clubhouse. But, again... The danger is hours and hours, you know, spent on there. I just think it's another distraction. It can be. Well, can social be. media can be that too. Absolutely. If you let it. I use it constructively. When I use it, yeah. I schedule um, and I stick to that. Yeah. I'm not really, because who has time? I, I just, I, I just don't have the time. I don't have the time. I and I'm intentional it. with the time that I have. Yeah, absolutely. So, Those, I mean, so there I think, it is. I think that people need to do their due diligence and research people that they're absolutely. listening to. Absolutely. I think it would save a lot of people a lot of heartache and headache. and Because everybody can talk. Everybody. My ex can talk. Uh-oh. Huh? That's how he got me. Uh-oh. Because you're good at talking. Oh, man. Oh, but what are you doing? What? 
What are we doing out here? Uh oh. What are we doing? Uh oh. Sometimes you gotta get close to the mic and you, you gotta ask questions. And the questions are, what are we doing? You can talk. And that's what it's all about. It's about good talking. But what are you doing? Are you backing it up? Are we clear? Oh, we're all right. Ah. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of The Lexi Show with my co-host, Safana. And it has been brought to you by Geek Cosmetics. Geek Cosmetics, where you gotta get your makeup, where you can wear the word of God on your face. And this has been powered by NCM Studios, and I want to thank my great producer, Garrett. And I, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm glad, I'm glad you're here. Okay? See you next time. <laughs>